and welcome back. Not every journey through the world of troubleshooting ends the same way. Some things are easier to troubleshoot than others. And also, if you and I have been working on like one large network, and we know it like the back of our hand, <laughs> it's a lot easier to troubleshoot because we know what the subnets are and the interfaces involved. Where, on the other hand, if we go to a brand new network where we're doing consulting, it may take some warm up time to get used to and to figure out where everything is on that specific customer's network. And when we're doing troubleshooting, again, whether it's our own network that we know really well or it's a new network that we were just introduced to, if we have a certain process or methodology for troubleshooting, we can apply that methodology across the board. So let's have some fun with this. We'll put an overview of the high-level steps regarding a troubleshooting methodology. And then as we proceed together, we'll actually apply those steps as we troubleshoot together a network. So at the very beginning of this troubleshooting process, it would be to identify the problem. Case in point, let's imagine that the user who's sitting at this computer right here, PC10, calls the service desk or the help desk or whatever they're calling it in your organization, and they say, yeah, I've got a problem. And then the service desk says, okay, tell me more. And if the user says, well, I can't really tell you anything. <laughs> well, we have to kind of, you know, narrow down what the problem is or at least get what the symptoms are. And that's why one of the very first steps is to identify the problem. So with the identification of the problem, the user may say, I can't access the internet. Or they may just say the network is down, at which point we would ask some additional questions. So let's imagine this user says that I can't access anything on the internet. That would fall into this category of identifying the problem is that this user who normally can access the internet can no longer access the internet. The second step would be to establish a theory regarding why that might be happening. And so by leveraging a topology like this, we could ask ourselves a few questions. For example, is this computer powered on? <laughs> uh, if the computer is powered on, does it have an IP address? And if it's a DHCP client, did it get the right information regarding a default gateway and the subnet and all that good stuff? And then regarding this port, is this port on the switch, is it associated with the right VLAN, which is VLAN 10? And regarding the trunking, does going down from the access layer switch to the core? Is trunking working and is VLAN 10 being allowed? And then from the default gateway's perspective regarding VLAN 10, who's acting as the default gateway? Is it core one or core two? Or are they using a first hop redundancy protocol? And if so, which one of these two devices is acting as the active device? And does that device acting as the default gateway have a route out towards the internet? In simple terms, does it know how to forward? And the same thing would hold true for this router and then this connectivity to our service provider. And also because we're using RFC 1918 addresses, perhaps network address translation is failing or isn't implemented correctly. So if this user at PC10, by doing a few tests, we verify that it can ping its default gateway. And if this device in VLAN 10 up here at headquarters can ping devices out here at site two and site three and has reachability there, that can help identify what is working. And then we can establish a theory about what may be specifically causing the problem. And then once we've narrowed it down to what we think it might be, and then the third step is to test, which is to basically go in and prove your theory. If we think the problem is with router one, or if we think the problem was with the multi-layer switch, or we think the problem was with the access layer, we want to do some testing to validate that what we think may be the problem really is causing the problem. And then once we've narrowed it down and verified it, we then want to go ahead and solve the problem. Now, solving the problem <laughs> uh, in an organization also has many steps involved with it. Let's list a few of those as far as the solution to this network connectivity problem that the user is having out to the internet. And let's also imagine, based on our testing, that we believe it's an issue with address translation, which could be NAT or PAT, but definitely needs to happen at some point before that traffic goes out to the internet. So if we've done some testing and we've narrowed it down that it is an address translation issue, regarding solving that, we'd want to create a game plan on exactly how we are going to solve that problem. Perhaps with network address translation, the NAT device was set up to support VLAN 20 with the 10120 subnet, and other networks like this over here at site two and site three, but maybe perhaps not including the 10.110 subnet. So we'd wanna make a plan to correct that. And also in corporations, that's going to involve going through change control if we're gonna make a configuration change. And then with the authorization from the change control board, then we're gonna go ahead and implement the change. And then when we've implemented it, we also wanna verify that it's working. And that verification would involve a few things. Number one, that we now have connectivity from this PC out to the internet. Also, we'd wanna verify that we didn't make any other changes that would negatively impact our environment. Like we want to make sure that everything else still functions as well. VLAN 20 and the other sites, everybody can still forward out to the internet. And then we'd also want to make sure we document the solution, what we did, how we did it. And if we change the topology in some fashion, we'd want to include that update in our documentation. So the documentation of what was done and also the topology, if there's been updates, that's super important because let's say uh, three or four days go by and we have yet another problem. And we think, oh, I wonder if what we changed here 
injected additional problems into the network. So we could go back through our paper trail and identify what happened, when it happened, what was changed. And that can help speed up our troubleshooting because a lot of times <laughs> uh, there are cabling issues and physical issues and so forth. But a lot of times when something breaks on the network, when something stops working, it's quite often due to the last change that was made. And so if we go back and take a look at the last change or two, that can help us reduce our troubleshooting time by either confirming that what was done is not impacting our current problem or by verifying that what was done indeed is impacting our current network. And then the last step here is to go ahead and repeat this process for the next problem. So the next service call that comes in, the next issue, the next problem, again, we're going to follow this logical plan. So what I think would be fun to do is let's take this network topology, which we've been playing on and off with throughout these videos. And what I'll do is I will inject a problem somewhere in this mix. And then we can go through these steps one at a time in this troubleshooting methodology. And as we do so, we'll go into more details on each one. So in the very next video, join me as we take a look at this first stage in the troubleshooting methodology. And that is identifying the problem, which we'll do in this network topology. So I'll see you in that video in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.